to have you with us again and we're going to continue our study in the book of Acts and we're uh, entering into chapter 2 which is just an amazing chapter in the Bible. Um, it's one of the most exciting chapters in the Bible because it really gives us a picture of the beginning of the church, how the church um, explodes into into the world and, and uh, how the Holy Spirit just um, releases uh, the power that, that was promised by Jesus uh, into the world. And so let, let's jump right into it. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says this, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Now, the day of Pentecost was actually a Jewish holiday. It was um, 50 days after the deliverance of the, uh, of the Israelites that were released from Egypt. Um, 50 days after that, they, they um, celebrated, and, and it was a Jewish holiday called Penta, Pentecost. Um, Penta means five, right? And it's 50, um, 50 days. So when, um, when, when they celebrated this, Jews from all over the world would come together in Jerusalem. They would gather from all around the world because, remember, uh, Israel has been through many, many uh, persecutions. They've been through many um, uh, exiles and and attacks from other company, countries. And uh, through that and through those exiles, Jewish people have been spread out all over the world, just like they are today. There are Jewish people in in Russia, in uh, the United States, in uh, almost every country on the planet because they've been exiled from their homeland. And because of that, they, they are spread out. But on Pentecost, when they celebrate Pentecost, they come back together, they join back together at, for this holiday. And God chose this holiday as the opportunity to release the Holy Spirit on his people, which is just a brilliant plan. Because when you when you are trying to get everything out into the world, what better way to do that than to gather ambassadors to come into one place, give them what you want to uh, deliver, and then release them back into the world. And that's exactly what's happening here um, when the day of Pentecost happens and when the Holy Spirit comes, when the when the church is born, really, because of the power of the Holy Spirit released. And so in verse 2 it says, Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were staying. Now remember, they were sitting, it, it says filled the whole house where they were sitting. Where they were, where they were living is called, we, we call it the upper room. Um, and they were, uh, they were there because Jesus told them to be there. Remember Jesus said, stay here. Don't go anywhere. Don't leave this place until the promised Holy Spirit is is given. Until God gives, and until the Holy Spirit that God promised comes to you. And so they're staying there. They're waiting uh, for this to happen. And um, and this is when God releases something on the earth. And it sounds like the blowing of a violent wind that happens in verse three. He says they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of the, on each of them. Now I've always thought about this in a very visual way because this is like setting, setting Christians on fire, right? We're, we're walking around with the flame of God coming out of our heads. Um, this is a powerful image to me and, and one that, that I would just, I would just love to see because I, I just think it's important that we understand or that we see in this passage each individual received this power, received the Holy Spirit, received the flame, the fire of God on their lives. Each individual had that. And and through that, they be, they they become the believers that are going to take that fire, take that flame, and spread it out. Uh, I mean, that's what we do, right? We, when we do a uh, Christmas Eve service, you know, we, we take the candle and we light one candle and that candle, you light the person next beside you, 
you light their candle and so on and so on and in just a very short period of time the entire room is lit up with candlelight because everybody took their light and spread it to the next person and when we do that when we do that with the gospel when we do that with the love of God and we share his good news with others we are we are spreading the fire that he's given to us so that this world can burn for him and, and that's just such an important thing I think for us believers to grab a hold of and to understand so it says in verse 4 all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them so they began to speak in other languages they began to speak and, and, we'll, and we'll understand that even more here in a second. It says in verse 5, Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. Remember, I said, God drew them back as Jewish people to celebrate this Jewish holiday in Jerusalem. But it was for a purpose. It was for a reason. So that he could send them out. It says that... Um, when they heard the sound, a crowd came toward in a, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, "Where are where?" Uh, they said, "Utterly amazed." They asked, "Aren't all of these uh, who are speaking Galileans? Aren't they just from Galilee? Galilee is actually up in the mountains." It's country, it's hillside, it's it's hillbillies, right? These are these are not even big city people. These are hillbillies up in the mountains. These are shepherds and and uh, you know farmers and people that live on the land. And 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 now all of a sudden they're speaking all the languages of all of the of uh, from every nation under heaven. And people are amazed. They, they can't understand it. it. In verse 8 it says, Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native tongue? And then he gives a big long list of all the different places that they came from. And, and here's what I think is most important and, and key about this. Is that when God wants to get a message across, He's going he's gonna to use whatever vessel He needs to deliver that message even if that even if that vessel doesn't have the capacity the capability to deliver that message if that vessel is willing if that vessel is is surrendered to God and willing to allow him to use you for whatever his purpose is he will put the words in your mouth he will deliver the language that needs to be heard and and these, these Galileans, these simple people that are believing in God, these fishermen, these farmers, you, you know, they, they've come together because God called them together. And, and then when he fills them with the Holy Spirit, he sends them out and they begin to speak. And when they begin to speak, they are understood by people from all over the world. This is a miraculous thing. But I believe it's, a, it's the kind of thing that God wants us to do. When we are willing to go, He is willing to show us uh, what He can do through us. And, and it's in that way that we get to experience the, the release of the gospel, the release of the good news, the release of His power. And, and so he, he goes through uh, this whole list of places where they are from, and then uh, in verse 12, it says, Amazed and perplexed, they ask one of them, What does this mean? You see, I think that's what happens in the world. When the, when the church steps up and steps out and begins to display the, the, the power of God and, and begins to release the power that, that God has given to us, I, I, I just believe that God has given us things that... It, that you just can't get anywhere else if we are willing to release the gifts and the and the fruit remember that's what the Christian has with the, to give that's what we have that God has given us we have gifts and we have fruit we have the fruit of the Spirit love joy patience kindness gentleness 
self-control, all of those. And then we have the gifts. And the gifts are the gifts of wisdom, knowledge, healing, comfort, all, all of these uh, gifts that we that we get to bring gifts of prophecy for the sake of encouragement and comforting and and lifting up and and, and equipping people uh, it, these are these are things that God has put into us so that we can release them into the world and make a difference wherever we go I hope that helps you I hope that encourages you I hope it lifts you up to want to go out and and make a difference uh, to speak to people in power. If nothing else, I, I would just encourage you to do this. I would encourage you to pray. Spend some time in prayer. Right now during this quarantine, spend some quiet time with God and, and, and really asking God, God, fill me with the Holy Spirit the way you filled them, the way they were filled up, the way they were lit on fire, the way they were overflowing. Fill me that way. I want to pray for you. Lord, I just pray right now that everybody watching would just be filled with the Holy Spirit, would be empowered by your power, your strength, that we would be lit on fire like candles to burn for you so that we can spread our flame around the world. We can spread the flame of the gospel and the light of your word. And, and we just pray that, that through it all, lives will be changed transformed that our lives will be changed and transformed and we will begin to see you in everything that we do in jesus name amen amen god bless you everyone